Hi, this is Rabbi Chaim Kaufman. Welcome to our 266th installment in the Torah portion of the week. We are holding my parshas Devarim, everybody on the same page, right, everyone here in Israel, everyone outside of Israel, uh, holding my parshas Devarim. Parshas Devarim is the first book, let's say better, the first parsha in the book of Deuteronomy. And it's basically Moshe Rabbeinu's swan song, right? It's the last, you know, last number of days of his life. And goes through a lot of uh, mitzvahs, recapitulates some of the mitzvahs. It's basically Moshe Rabbeinu's swan song and giving rebuke to the Jewish people before he goes, right? So uh, talks about that, talks about his rebuke, appointment of judges, mission of the spies, um, talks about Esav and, and Seir, talks about God's commands um, to Israel to march towards the land, first conquest of Sihon, conquest of Og, and the inheritance of Reuben, God, and half of Menashe. So the Torah, the Torah here says, uh, chapter 3, verse 3, the book of Deuteronomy. And the Torah says, Hashem our God gave into, us, gave into our hands. Also, Og, king of the Bashan, and his entire people, we smote him, and no survivors were left of him. So by Og, all right, by Og here, what does the Torah tell me? Torah says he got wiped out, right? He and all those people, they got wiped out. So says Moi Verebi, Arava Gon Ramoshita should be well. And he brings down his commentary in Chumish in Tam Vidas. That's the name of his commentary on Chumish. He brings down a Medrash. Brings down a Medrash. And he says that, well, what does the Medrash say? Medrash says, you know, Og was a giant. Right, survived. Right, survived the floods by by hanging on um, the side of the ark. Is able to survive the flood. Regardless, what does it? What does the Medrash say? It says that Og wanted to pick up a mountain, cut up a mountain, wanted to pick it up, throw it on the Jewish people. That's what he wanted to do. Right, obviously for his love of the Jewish people, wanted to destroy the Jewish people. What to do? Moshe Rabbeinu took a took a rock, and he said a shame of Mefurish. He said an explicit name of God, and he put it on the rock, and dropped the mountain, fell on him, and he died. Right, that's what happened. Right, so the Jewish people said, interesting enough, they said, "Curse it on their hand." Or the ones I want to throw, i.e. Og, and what he wanted to do. And the Amorites said, blessed are their hands that, you know, were placed on this mountain that made the mountain fall. So on the one hand, on the one hand, you got the Jewish people, you know, cursing, cursing the hands of Og over here. On the other hand, you have the Amorites Blessing the hands that are pushing Oak down. It's gonna knock, that's not gonna, it's gonna knock him off. There's my Rebbe over there. Interesting question. He says the Amorites are praising the Jewish people and blessing the hands, the arms of Moshe Rebbe. But don't the Amorites hate the Jews? Amorites are no, no lovers of Jews over here. They also hate the Jews tremendously. So why the praise? Why the praise for Moshe Rabbeinu? Now, interesting. So my Rebbe says that the Amorites learn out. They learn out from the actions of Moshe. His unbelievable righteousness. And this love of humans, love of everybody. Right? From within his heart. He loved everybody. What happened over here? Comes along Og. Right? Comes along Og over here. And Og is evil. What do you want? Right? What did Og want? Og wants to uproot the Jewish people. Destroy the Jewish people, essentially. 
and wipe them out in one shot. Then they're going to take this bomb, they're going to throw it on the Jewish people, and that's it. It's got that. That'll be it. Mortis prayer. Finished. So how could Moshe, with all his strength, why didn't he do what Oak did or wanted to do? Right, why didn't you throw it on him? He didn't want to throw the, the mountain on him. What did he do? He took a rock and used the shame. He used the ineffable name of God. That's how Oak got destroyed. Well, why didn't he do measure for measure? Oh, you want to throw it on us? Well, guess what? I'm going to throw it back. You use the shame, I'll throw it back. I use the ineffable name of God. I'll dump you on the, the mountain on you. Ha ha. <laughs> ha ha, I'll jump it on you. But he didn't. What did he do? He stopped the mountain from falling on the Jewish people. So there lies the question. Why? Why do it that way? Why not do what Oak did to him or wanted to do the Jewish people? So what do we see? So everyone says, Jewish people are not like other nations. Other nations, they don't have compassion. They don't have compassion in their heart. And war destroys them. Totally destroys them. We're not like that. We do what we're commanded to do. The Moshe Bano did what he needed to do. So interesting. What makes a Jew a Jew? What are some character traits of Jews? So the Gemara says, we're Rachmanim, Bashanim, and Gibrus Chasodim. We have compassion for others. We get embarrassed easily. And we do a lot of chesed. We do a lot of acts of loving kindness. Okay. That being true. We're not like the other nations. Right? The other nations don't have compassion like Jews do. And we certainly see that. Because they don't have that aspect of their soul. A Jewish soul, a Jewish person in general, if they're going to the ways of Torah, they have compassion for others. They have compassion for others. Non-Jews have compassion for others. Sometimes. You know, probably less than more. He says over here, when they go to war, you think, okay, you go to war, anything goes. You do what you need to do for survival. But you see, war can cause a person to do all kinds of crazy things. To do many crazy things. Jewish people are held to a higher standard. We're held to a higher standard over here. You know, that's why the Israeli army, they want to make it the most moral army in the world. But there's a limit. What, I have to have, ta- you know, I have to hold my hands behind my back till someone attacks me that I can attack them. Or let's say, you know, let's say someone gets attacked. You have a gun, you can't run and chase the attackers. That's illegal. You're only, you're only allowed to shoot in the air. So you're going to say, okay, per- you know, Logically, we could say, okay, your life's not in danger. So you can't run after and kill them, right? So that would be true. That would be true. But there was a whole case with a soldier. You know, they, they neutralized a terrorist. Terrorist on the ground. Soldier thought terrorist is coming, you know, had a, had a gun or something. You know, he was going to lunge at the person. He shot him. And he shot him dead. Soldier got a lot of flack. Put a military prison for a short amount of time. Why? He didn't do what he was supposed to do. He was down, but he thought he was coming to attack him. 
Okay, Miss Judge. But see, somebody's down. You don't know what the person's gonna do. If he's dead, okay. You know, you go check on him, he's gonna lunge at you. I'm not saying you kill him. But you gotta be careful. Right? So this is a bad precedent. This is a bad precedent. You know, who's gonna, you know, who's gonna want to do this? He claimed himself defense. We already know what this terrorist tried to do. He's a terrorist. I'm not saying again. Don't want to be misquoted here. We're not saying he just kill him. You stop him however you can stop him. You know, it doesn't mean you have to kill him. But what's the army going to say? You got to be so moral. If he's down, you can't do anything. Okay. You know, but he thought they had a weapon. He made a mistake, no question. Anyone can make such a mistake. Whether you're younger, you're older. Because your life feels like it's being threatened. Okay, you can't have someone be a vigilante. True. But see, if a person gets attacked, you know, and especially here, God forbid someone, you know, ways takes them to an, you know, an Arab village. You ain't coming out alive in general. What do you want? You're only supposed to shoot in the air? <laughs> Mob scene. You know, it's like having your two hands tied behind your back. Can't do that. War is war. You do whatever it takes. What, civilians can't protect themselves? It's insane. You know, I know somebody had their car demolished you know, by abs and, you know, went out and started shooting. Please won't take his gun away. I said, you can't do that. You can only shoot in the air. He's like, come on, come take it. <laughs> you don't mess with settlers. So yeah, come on, I, you know, say, go take my gun. Well, on the books is you shoot in the air. You know, that, that's not an act of war. Again, can you kill someone you know, if you're not if you're not in danger, no. That you're not allowed to do. Okay, you should have shot in the air. He went ballistic. You know, okay. You know, he's got a right to defend himself, though. No one's claiming not. But they'll say, you know, we have to be better. We have to be more moral. You know, to a point. War is war. You know, is the other side going to be moral? No. Not at all. That's what he's saying over here. He's going to say, what did Og want to do? Og want to take them out and throw it on the Jews. So what would we do? What would we say? <laughs> Let Moshe do that. Let Moshe take them out and throw it on him. He didn't do that. We're not like everybody else. And when it comes to war, there's still ways to go to war. That are proper ways to go to war. We're not animals. And if you're not, you know, if you're not guided by terror, how are you different than an animal? Oh, we're getting very not PC here. Because if you don't have an anchor, you don't have a moral anchor, i.e., the Torah, you're not gonna be moral. It'll be moral what you think morality is. So I don't cheat on my tax. Everybody does. Uncle Sam takes too much. Aye, right, but you know about steel? Ah, oh, that's different. Euthanasia, that's different. Grandpa was already old, senile, put him out of our own misery. It's murder. We don't take the law in our own hands. Guard of what doctors say. Probably the biggest murderers in the world. You know, we're going to decide who, you know, what quality of life is. We don't care what doctors say. Go according to what God says. Go according to what the Torah says. So if that's true, then my obligation is to be a moral soldier. We don't like everybody else, right? That's the point my Rebbe here makes. We are not like everybody else. We shouldn't be. 
We have to we have to uphold the higher standard. We're being judged in a much greater way, okay? But who says? Who says I should do the measure for measure? Isn't that taking revenge also? Maybe that's another problem. Because here, oh, you want to do the stars? Ah, we're going to do better. We're going to do it back. It doesn't. Could be that's what he means also. The fact that we don't like everybody else. Someone else would have said, okay, I got that kind of power. I'm going to dump it on you. Ah, you want to do it to us? I'll do it to you. Who gives you the right? This is what my Arabian means. We're not like everybody else. We should, you know, we shouldn't be like everybody else. We eat different things, different holidays, all kinds of things. We're different. We should be different in so many ways how we act. So do in war. We'll do what we need to do. You know, but you know, you take a terrorist. Let's say you already know. You know, this terrorist, uh, you know, let's say got on a bus, flew off the bus. He himself didn't die, though. Let's say he didn't die. He's still alive. See, we're so moral, we'll do everything to save him. What would someone else do? Shoot him! Put him out of his own misery. Gonna sit there and save him? <laughs> Guy that blew up a bus. And somehow survived. And he's running away. Or trying to get away. Probably won't get very far. So we'll be so humane. We're going to take him. Give, you know, and we're going to save his life. That's what they'll do. Who says we have to do that? I have an obligation to save a terrorist's life. Oh, that's a good question. He didn't die. Let's say better. Let's say he didn't blow himself up. Because if he would have blown himself up, he would have died. Let's say. So let's say he attacks somebody. Go on a bus, start stabbing people, someone shoots him. But he's still alive. What are they going to do? And it sounds ludicrous. This guy is trying to stab maybe He killed some people. God forbid. Trying to stab people. Someone shoots him. He's still alive. They're going to whisk him off to the hospital and save his life. And he'll be in recovery. And he'll go to jail. Live a nice life to a prisoner exchange or who knows what. Imagine. He's going to get saved. They're going to save his life. We have to go that far. We have to be so moral. Yeah, we're not animals. We're not animals. But what would our heart tell us? Forget the brain here. What would our heart tell us? You know what our heart would tell us? Our heart would say, you gotta be off your cotton picking head. Coffin's landing. You're gonna be nuts. Why in the world are you gonna save this guy? Come dive his wounds. He'll think he's gonna go to heaven and get 70 virgins. Good luck with that. He's a goner. See, we're not like everybody else. But most people would say, shoot him. Except the lefties. <laughs> lefties say, no, you can't shoot him. Look how he grew up. It's not his fault. Brainwashed by says, I bought all these things. But you're right. You can't kill him. You wounded him. You can't kill him. Because we hold by, we're held to a, a different standard. Right? And the guy's probably going to get saved. According to nature, what would most people say? Carve this guy out. He's injured. Severely injured. Yeah, let's just stick in the knife a little bit more. Would be justified, in theory, what we just did. We're like, yeah, we grew up. What happened? He murdered people. We're going to save him. We have an obligation to save his life. We're not like everybody else. All right, and that's the point. That's the point here my everyone makes. 
Jewish people and all like other nations. They take revenge. They do what they did to us. You know, like at the end of the war, you know, people are free. They don't have a duty to kill their tormentors. They didn't. Because we're different. The Jewish people are different. And we're not like everybody else. I want to remind everyone, I give a class through the heart every, every Tuesday, 9 o'clock Eastern time. Um, I have a bunch of class on Sunday, Book of Leviticus chapter 16, 9 o'clock Eastern time, 4 o'clock Israel time. Um, no, I have nations, 2.30 Eastern time, 9.30, uh, 9.30 Israel time on Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday, two Q&As, uh, 10 o'clock Eastern time, 5 o'clock Israel time. Um, Tanakh talk every Thursday, 8 o'clock, 8 o'clock Eastern time. Pirkei Avos every Saturday, 2.30 Eastern time, 9.30 Israel time. And conversion class. I have conversion classes during the week as well. So anyone interested in any of that, find me on Facebook at Michael Chaim Kaufman. Send me an email. Or you can find me at Beyond Orthodox Conversion Judaism. You can send me an email. Rabbi Chaim Kaufman at gmail.com. R-B-B-I-C-H-A-I-M-C-O-F-F-M-A-N at gmail.com.